what is going on everybody my name is nico and welcome back to another pokemon scarlet and violet guide video today we are talking competitive pokemon getting into competitive in scarlet and violet and the basics and everything that you need to know to actually hop in and play now i've made a handful of these videos in the past for sword and shield and some for even bdsp and i try to do a beginner's guide like this annually that's usually my go-to method but because scarlet and violet just came out i feel like it's necessary to do another even though my most recent one was only in like july i just did another one in july but i want to get this video out because there's more people hopping in and playing pokemon scarlet and violet and getting back into pokemon so because of the new launch i'm going to do another one of these videos so if this is your first time here on the channel make sure you are subbed for more pokemon scarlet and violet content like this in the future and check out the discord where people over there hanging out playing pokemon together but let's get into competitive pokemon so i've broken this down into four categories this is typically what i do usually it's three i've added an additional category this video first up is why you should try competitive pokemon because a lot of people might be wondering you know what's it all about what's the point of it but also i have the basics team building and playing the game those are the categories that i have included here that will help break down stuff so you guys can get into it now i get a lot of comments on these videos regarding like oh you 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 give little information here and a little information there but nothing goes super in depth if i went in depth on everything that happens in pokemon competitively we would be here over an hour we would be here over an hour my hope is my brother just got back into pokemon and he has expressed interest into getting into competitive play my hope is that i could do a mini series with him and go over literally everything that there is in competitive pokemon and then upload it for you guys while i teach him the game that would be ideal but i got to get back with him on that but today we're just going to go over some basic stuff and i'm going to provide some information regarding it so why you should try competitive pokemon first up if you're new to competitive pokemon it's a brand new side of the game. It's some stuff that you've probably never experienced before. And it just adds a whole lot extra to do in the game, which is the next step. It increases the lifespan of the game. If you're somebody that typically just hops in, plays Pokemon, maybe does some of the post-game stuff and then bounces or maybe shiny hunts and then bounces after getting a couple of shinies, this adds so much more life to your game and adds so much more replay value because you're in constantly doing stuff to get better Pokemon. So this adds just a whole lot extra in terms of game length to a Pokemon game. Also, there's just so many fun ways to play there's tons of different formats you can pick and choose from and there's a little something for everybody in my opinion in terms of competitive battling so now that that's out of the way let's talk about the basics of competitive battling what is the important stuff that you should really really look into in terms of getting into this particular gameplay style so my first suggestion when you get into competitive pokemon is picking a format style there's a bunch of different ways that you can play whether it be single battles or double battles and i'm going to go over a couple of them now so the most popular single battles format is actually not run by Pokemon itself. It's run by a group called Smogon. And Smogon curates these rule sets for different formats of Pokemon, whether it be they have them divided into different categories based on their strengths. So like legendary Pokemon would be an Ubers category. The more mediocre but not super overpowered Pokemon are called OU and so on and so forth. And OU is the most popular format of the Smogon stuff. So this is a really popular format to play. I actually played a lot of it in Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. And I really enjoy the singles format because it just plays so differently than the standard double battle format that is so popular. It's just super fun, it's quick, it's entertaining. I am much better at double battles than I am at single battles. I, I'm really not that great at single battles, but it's just so much fun to play that I continue to do it. Next up is the official Pokemon rule set. And this is VGC or double battles. This is a very, very popular format. And it's the, like I said, official one for competitive play in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, as well as all the previous games. They just like double battles formats. And I understand why it's very fun. It's very methodical methodical it's very strategical i absolutely love double battles and this is the one that has a continuing uh rule set so every series when in sword and shield the series were a month long they would change the rules and add more pokemon or take certain pokemon away based on their usage stats so that way there was just a little bit something different every time you hopped into play and i'd assume this is going to be a similar strategy that they take going forward in scarlet and violet where they have different rule sets and usually again it's over a month but at the time of recording this video they have not officially announced what the first rule set is going to be my guess is we're not going to have paradox pokemon for a while but 
that's just what VGC is. The final format, and I don't know if it's changed necessarily going into Scarlet and Violet, but that was Battle Stadium Singles, which was the single battle format that you would play on cartridge in Pokemon Sword and Shield, where you take three Pokemon and do a single battle in that format with another player. And that was an official rank ladder for that. It would follow the same rule set that VGC was following, but it's Smogon has a completely separate rule set. So there's a couple options in terms of single battles that you could do. The next thing that I want to talk about is type matchups. This is something that you should really, really understand and something you really need to learn if you are getting back into Pokemon or if you are a brand new player. Understanding your type matchups is going to give you such a better advantage getting into competitive Pokemon because then you're going to know what moves affect, what moves don't hit certain Pokemon. It's just super important. I'll have a chart somewhere on screen here that you can look at, but I'm not going to go in and break down every single type advantage in the game. Next up, let's talk about stats. Each stat is going to give you a different thing. So there are six stats total. HP, we one, obviously that's the more health the Pokemon has. There's attack, which determines their physical power. There is defense, which determines their ability to take physical attacks. There is special attack, which increases moves that are special based like flamethrower, uh, hydro pump, things like that. And there is special defense, which allows you to take those hits better and also speed, which determines if your Pokemon would move first in a battle. These are super important to know and understand. And they're also important in another step that I'm going to talk about here in a second. But first, I want to talk about physical and special attacks. These are indicated by these icons on screen here. All you have to know is that some are physical, some are special, and the type of Pokemon that you have, whether it be, you know, a physical attacker or a special attacker, for example, let me bring us over to Showdown, a little spoiler for the team I've been working on that I'm going to show in a video, but for example, Quackwovel has an attack of 120, has an attack of 120, this would indicate that this Pokemon is a special attacker, look at the special attack stat, it's 85, this is not going to be a Pokemon that's going to be using special attacks, you're going to want to focus on your physical attacks so as you can see for example this is the physical icon this is the special icon that's all you need to know this pokemon is going to do more damage with these attacks than it would with something with this symbol that's just the breakdown the very basic nature of it the next thing i'm going to talk about are non-damage moves because a lot of people when they're playing through pokemon will only have damaging attacks on their pokemon and while this is okay on some pokemon it's not going to be the case in a lot of scenarios so things like protect thunder wave leech seed are all viable options in competitive pokemon and you need to start learning some of these additional moves because you're going to start seeing them a lot when you hop into competitive play for example things like wish or uh protect are super super common and because they provide this sort of effect that can prolong a battle or change up the course of a battle they are very important so learning these non-damage moves is very key next up we're talking about evs and ivs and this is something that i always bring up and break down in any of these videos because it is super important something that a lot of people don't understand so starting with ivs these are stats individual stats that pokemon are born with and cannot be altered outside of using bottle caps that is the only way to change them in the game and they go from a range of like no good to best and obviously if you're only times you're going to want to run no good is in very certain scenarios but every other time you just want best on all the pokemon but then there's EVs, and these are effort values, and effort values are trained on a Pokemon. They are stats that are acquired through a lot of different methods, and I have a guide breaking all that stuff down. If you want to see anything on EV training, you can break it down. I'm going to show you a little bit here on Pokemon Showdown. So EVs are these guys here. As you can see, EVs, each EV can have 252 max in it. There are a total of 510 EVs that you can use, and every time you want to power up a certain point, you have to use four EVs. Four EVs raises the stat by one point. So really there's only 508 viable EVs that you can use. So as you can see on my Quack Wolf over here, we have 252 and 252 and then a four just to add an additional point somewhere else. That gives me 508. The extra two don't matter because they, they don't do anything. But these are trained. There's a bunch of different methods. Like I said, check out the EV training video if you want to know more on that. IVs are over here. This is obviously the best, but you can also change it to like zero. And that's a no good nature, right? But I want 31 for this particular Pokemon. I'm going to change it back so I don't forget. And like I said, if you want a full breakdown for that and also how to get IVs on certain Pokemon, check out my EV training guide as well as my breeding guide. Check out those guides. And that really is the final step of the basics is watching guides on all of this information that you don't understand. Like I said, if I were to go in and break down everything in this video, we would be here all day, but I'm not going to do that here. I'm going to show you the basic stuff that you need to understand, and then you can migrate to other places and watch a bunch of guides.
And I'm not saying you have to go and watch my guides. I have a lot of Pokemon competitive guides that break down a lot of information. But if you find somebody else to be more entertaining than me or whatever the case may be, by all means, go watch them. But watching guides is going to help you understand the game that much more. And it's just going to make you a better player. And a lot of people play Pokemon a lot better than me. I, it's just the way it is. I'm not going to sit here and act like I'm the best. Like no one ever was, right? I just play Pokemon. I have fun. I have some pretty good success in a lot of competitions that I've participated in. But... You know, I, I there are other people out there that play this game and play it at a much higher level than me. So if you find somebody else you enjoy, go watch their guides by all means. But watch guides. It's super, super key. Now we're going to be moving on into team building, which is so crucial to competitive play. Again, first step I'm going to say is picking a format. Picking a format is going to be huge in this regard because it gives you that idea of what certain Pokemon are going to do. Certain Pokemon perform better in different formats and they do different things in different formats. So understanding what you're going to do is going to help you kind of start getting ideas of what you want to use on your team. A step for people that are just getting into competitive play is using rental teams. And this is something that a lot of content creators out there will do or just players in general will post a rental code that you can download a team that's already made and ready to go and you could start battling with that team and this is really useful for new players because it gives them the ability to pick up a team and start kind of just tinkering with stuff and seeing how stuff works while actually playing the game and then i would say start working into building your own teams and the reason i say that is i feel it just is something that's so crucial for understanding the game better because you know the ins and outs of a particular team until you get very very good at playing this team you're not going to be able to look at a team and go oh this is what this team does but if you build the team yourself you know exactly everything the strengths the weaknesses what that team is going to be capable of so building a team is super super important and the resource i recommend using the most is pokemon showdown pokemon showdown is this tool that you see right here on screen it's what i've been using frequently throughout this video this is super super helpful for building teams online with all the Pokemon in whatever format you want to use. As you can see, there's tons of formats that you can try out, whether it be from Sword and Shield, Black and White, you know, any of the formats you want to use. Uh, National Dex formats, uh, where, what else is there? Let's see here. Uh, Sword and Shield double battles, you know, if you want to still play Sword and Shield, whatever. Whatever you want to do, there are formats for every freaking game on this website you can make a team you can go in and search different pokemon change this and this is super important because you're able to build a team without wasting resources in game when i got into competitive play i made a team that was just super out there and super goofy and it had some success but it wasn't as refined as it could have been and i wasted a ton of resources getting it however if i had gone to pokemon showdown first i could have figured out the team and understood it better and then bred a more perfect team in game that performed a whole lot better than what it originally did so this is a great resource for planning out what you're going to do before actually starting to use your resources in game now another use useful useful resource is Picolytics. Picolytics is super awesome. This gives you breakdowns of a bunch of different Pokemon that you can use in particular format. So for example, if I wanted to look at Scarlet and Violet overused for single battles, it gives you the usage stats on all the Pokemon and it gives you moves and items. So for example, Goldango. Goldango, Shadow Ball, Make It Rain. It gives you all the most commonly used moves, great teammates for it. Gives you a breakdown of their stats, what terror uh, types are best on that Pokemon. Eventually, they will have uh, data on items and abilities, but right now they're still probably accumulating that information because, you know, the, the meta just kind of started and the game just came out, so they don't have a whole lot of information regarding that. But they have a ton of information here that allows you to kind of pick and choose what Pokemon you're going to want to use. Now, I'm going to make a completely separate guide for team building because it's just something that it has so many moving parts to it. But I'm going to briefly give you a quick breakdown of it here. So, for example, we're, I've got it in a singles OU format. So, single battle format. Pick a Pokemon. That's what you want to do. Start with an idea that you want to build around. That's a very key element. So, for example, let's say we want to use Palmon. Palmon's a really fun Pokemon to use. And then we look at its moves. Oh, it's got Volt Absorb. That's pretty neat. If it gets hit by an electric attack, it's immune to it. Or it has Iron Fist, which is super fun to use because this Pokemon's fairly fast. We're able to boost that up, boost its attack, do that. And I'm going to give it a Jolly Nature to make it even faster so we can outspeed stuff. Let's say we're going to give it a Life Orb, right? Then we have Volt Switch. Uh, we have uh thunder punch do we want thunder punch or no i don't know mock punch it gets mock punch i know that it gets ice punch and it gets 
doesn't get thunder punch it does get thunder punch there you go there's your move set right a bunch of punches that are going to get bonus damage because of the iron fist ability now we have our first pokemon we have an idea of what we're going to do next let's think oh what is this pokemon weak to this pokemon is going to be weak against ground types ground type is very prevalent against electric types it's also going to be weak to psychic types so let's think of a Pokemon that could handle both of those things very effectively. A Pokemon that's very popular right now in single battles, Corviknight. Corviknight handles both of those effectively because ground will not hit it at all and it is not going to take a ton of damage from a psychic type attack. So Corviknight, again, you use stuff like uh, Mirror Armor on it. Uh, Body Press is super popular because of its high defensive stat. Max out that HP, max out the defensive stat, put a little in special, uh, give it a nature let's see here do 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 where which nature am i looking for careful careful a buff that special defense plus the spe uh minus the special attack and the natures again are something that you have to learn on your own i'll put a bunch of information on screen for you but have that pokemon this pokemon is going to be able to handle anything that uh is going to affect palmat very heavily and then we put U-turn. But then we got to think, oh, gosh, what does affect Corviknight? What affects Corviknight? What is going to be a pain for Corviknight to deal with? Corviknight is going to be hit very hard by elect uh, electric attacks, fire type attacks, things of that nature. So a great Pokemon to handle any electric type attack is going to be Clodsire. Clodsire is not going to be hit by any sort of electric type attack. You don't have to worry about it. It's going to take that hit because it's immune and it's going to be great switching. But also Clodsire gets a really useful ability of Water Absorb. Water Absorb super cool. So what Pokemon would be weak to a water type attack that could benefit the rest of this team? For example, Corviknight's weak to fire. So why don't we throw on something like Skeledurge on the team that could take a fire type attack if Corviknight really needed it to. But also if water type attack went at it, we could switch in Clodsire and take that hit. There's a lot of things in team building, and this is just kind of a quick overview of the process, but I just wanted to kind of go over it with you very briefly and then move along. So finally, let's get into actually playing competitive Pokemon. Playing the game is something that's so, so important. Like you can do all these other steps, but until you actually play the game, you're not going to really be able to benefit. Team building versus playing is two very different things. So first thing to understand is that competitive Pokemon is beyond frustrating. It is so incredibly frustrating a game because there's so many RNG elements to it, whether it be status effects like uh, paralyzation. For example, you can go through a whole game, be paralyzed and hit every attack or some games you'll be paralyzed one turn, paralyzed another turn, paralyzed, 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 right? So there's a bunch of things that can affect it. Now you even have to think about Terra types because any Pokemon can change to any of the 18 types in the game. So that's another RNG variable that you have to think about. Now, obviously these are going to change because right now we are in the perfect time to hop in because everybody is trying to learn and understand this new game. We got a hundred some new Pokemon that we are all trying to figure out and work on new metas. There's not really a, an established meta yet. So everybody's playing with different stuff and it's a great time to hop in and start learning and you know, seeing how other people are playing different Pokemon, it's going to help you benefit. And this goes into the kind of the next thing is that learning from your mistakes is so key. For example, right now, like I said, everybody is trying to learn new Pokemon. We're trying to understand what certain um, movesets are being run, how people are handling different Pokemon. It's super, super key to understand from your mistakes what you did that you could have a better outcome and right now learning how other people are playing different pokemon is going to help you do that so instead of getting frustrated because a lot of people have this like i want to win 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 mentality it it's not something that's going to happen all the time right until you start understanding the game better especially right now while everybody's trying different stuff and you're not sure what you're going to see in every battle you're gonna lose a fair bit so just looking at oh this is what happened this battle this is what i did wrong and taking that and applying it to the next battle with a similar scenario you will be able to have better outcomes moving forward next up is practice 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 this is so important because by playing more and seeing more things you're just going to get better as a player and being able to again learn from those mistakes by playing the game you're going to just get better and better and better at playing the game and this also applies to team building the more you practice making team the better your teams will start to be my teams have gotten progressively better the more i play pokemon and the more i understand the game and it's just something that happens so the more you're playing practicing doing all that stuff the better you're going to be and it sounds super cliche but it's super true now currently there is not a ranked ladder available i believe it's starting sometime in december december's right around the corner and this video may even go up uh in december because it's like the 28th at the time of recording this right 
But this is super, super important is that don't be afraid to hop on the ranked ladder. I know a lot of people are so worried about that number on screen. They're so concerned about their rank that they will avoid it altogether. However, the whole point of a rank system is to actually be there to put you against players that are of a similar skill set that allows you to play against people that are on the same level as you and then progress accordingly. That is super important. And the only person that sees that number on screen is you. So it doesn't matter what the number on screen is. Just hop in and play battles against people. And the ranked system is the best way to get in and actually practice. Because if you hop into casual, the casual lobbies don't follow the same rule sets as the competitive lo lobbies. The ranked battles have their own rule sets and casuals are just a free for all out there. They, it's the wild west of competitive Pokemon, right? So if you want to play against stuff that you're actually going to see on a regular basis, you need to play in the competitive ladders. And again, it's just a number. It doesn't really matter. The final thing that I can tell you is have fun. This game is, again, so frustrating, but you need to be able to take your losses and just enjoy it, right? And play the game for fun and not to be the very best like no one ever was, right? <laughs> I keep using that joke. It's so stupid every time. But seriously, have fun. For example, a lot of the teams that I used way back in uh, Sword and Shield, a lot of those teams are goofy and they have silly Pokemon in them. And the reason they have silly Pokemon in them is because it adds a little bit of spice and people aren't expecting it. And I think that's super fun. But if I were to play in a normal competition where it's a best of three instead of a best of one, my teams just simply wouldn't hang because they would know the goofy thing that I'm about to do and they would be able to counter that the next game, right? But in a best of one, which is what the rank ladder actually is, those teams thrive. So go in and have fun with it. Have goofy teams like I do or do whatever makes you happy if you want to play with just meta pokemon play with just meta pokemon but enjoy what you're doing but that is going to be it for this video guys i hope you found it entertaining and helpful and if you did leave a like and smash the subscribe button for more competitive pokemon content like this in the future also be sure to check out the discord like i said it's super helpful super important that you guys check it out because there's a bunch of people in there working together complete the pokedex doing shiny hunts together doing all this that and the other very fun place to be and also check out dubby it is my energy drink partner add some to water shake it up delicious flavors it is 10 percent off with code nico but check out this video where i break down ev training if you want to see more competitive stuff ev training check it out very important and breeding breeding competitive pokemon is super difficult unless you have all the information you need which is right here check it out but like i said that's it for this video hope you all found it entertaining and I'll catch you in the next one peace